We're here today at the UNO Coastal Education Research Facility in East New Orleans on the edge of Lake Pontchartrain. We have a guest speaker today, Mary Gabala, who's going to teach us about blue crab anatomy, adaptations, and life cycles. Uh, today we want to learn a little bit about a very important animal that's called the blue crab. Its scientific name is Callinectes sapidus. And this is an arthropod, as most of you all already know. You can tell by that hard exoskeleton made out of that compound called chitin. And it's also got many, many jointed appendages, arthropoda, jointed legs. Now, when you look at the crab, some of you all know about some of these legs, like the big claws in front. We officially call those the chelipeds. And obviously, those are used for defense and food getting and fighting and they do a very good job of it. Now just behind that, we have three pairs of what we call the walking legs, obviously very different from the chelipeds, and they use these legs in order to walk, and very interestingly, they walk sideways, which allows them to use this little point on their carapace, the upper part of their exoskeleton, almost like a little spear, as a matter of fact. And the last pair of legs, these are the very distinctive, swimmerettes obviously look like little flippers that allow these crabs to swim very very easily through the water and gives them that added benefit of not only walking but also swimming. Two other things that you can notice at the front of the crab are these little eyes. That's very interesting. They're up on stalks and similar to insects and spiders these are compound eyes. They have numerous lenses on them that, in addition to being able to move the little eye stalks, enables them to see all around them very, very well, even though their head is merged to their thorax here. Now, if you look more closely at the crab, you might be able to get an idea if you have a male or a female. Looking at this little uh, crab, its chelipeds look kind of bluish, whereas if you look at this little crab, they're kind of reddish. Typically, your females have more reddish tips on their chelipeds, and your males have the more bluish tips. But that's not always reliable. To be sure, we want to move over here, and we want to look underneath the crab. This, of course, is his little abdomen that's folded underneath the cephalothorax. And when you look at that abdomen, you can easily tell if you have a male or a female crab. The male's abdomen is thin and pointed, whereas the female's is much broader. An immature female, it's shaped kind of like a triangle. A mature female, it's shaped more like a broad apron, because basically, this one, she's going to have to open that up a little bit and store her eggs in there after she's reproduced. And actually, that leads us kind of into something interesting about the life cycle of a crab. Let's look over here for a second. And what you see in this little life cycle diagram is crabs typically like to hang out in the low salinity estuaries and bays. Lots of food, lots of places to hide and live. But when it comes to reproduction in the late spring and early summer, what's going to happen is after the female breeds, she's going to start moving out to higher salinity water from the lower salinity estuaries. And she needs to do this because her eggs can't ripen unless they get out to the higher salinity. Sometimes on the coastline, you can see a female that's carrying her eggs. If you look right here at this picture, it's commonly called a sponge crab. Obviously, that mass of eggs is bright orange, very, very distinctive. And her little eggs will ripen in that mass. Now, as her eggs ripen and begin to hatch, as you probably could predict being an arthropod, the eggs are going to hatch out into little larvae, little immatures that are different from the adult. And the first larval stage looks kind of like a funny little shrimp. It's called a zoea. Let's look at a picture of that zoea over here. Here's a little zoea that I've got underneath a scope so you can see it a little better. Big eyes, a little point in the front, almost like a little spear to protect itself and a long skinny tail, kind of like, hmm, a little shrimp. 
Now these zoeas are going to probably go through about eight molts as they grow and get bigger and eventually metamorphosize into the next larval stage, which is called a megalops. All right, this next larval stage is called the megalops, and it's a little bit bigger, a couple of millimeters, and is not going to go through a bunch of molts. It's just going to kind of stay there for a few weeks, depending on environmental conditions. And eventually, that little megalops is then going to molt again, and this time into a juvenile crab. And if we look right here, we can see a little juvenile crab, actually two of them, not very big, and believe it or not, these are the little guys that know that they're going to have to move back into the low salinity waters of the estuaries and the bays. And basically, as they're moving, they're going to be eating, and they're going to molt, and they're going to get bigger, and slowly but surely, they're going to get bigger, and eventually are going to be a market-sized crab spending most of their time in those low salinity estuarine waters. Now, would you like to learn a little bit about the internal anatomy of these crabs? Now, what we've done with this crab is I've cracked off the carapace, the upper part or dorsal surface of the exoskeleton, and moved it out of the way so we can see inside the crab's body. Now, one of the things you notice immediately is you notice these little feathery gills and these are the structures that they use for gaseous exchange. Carbon dioxide out and oxygen in. Similar to what our lungs do across air, these gills do across the surface of water. Now, if I slide this little crab out of the way, and we look at this one a little bit more closely, we can see the mouth parts of the crab. And they've got mouth parts that basically manipulate the food, shovel the food, mash up the food, all hitting towards the stomach. And if we peek right here, there is his little stomach, as a matter of fact. And he'll be able to digest all kinds of things, because crabs really are kind of omnivorous, if the truth must be known, sometimes considered detritivores because they eat dead, decaying material. But also, with those chelipeds, we know they can be pretty good predators as well. One of the cra things that crabs do eat, of course, is rather interesting, are these little clams we call rangia. And believe it or not, as hard as this shell is, that's how strong these chelipeds are, because they can grab these and actually crack them up and take out the soft meat from inside and begin to shove that through their little mouth parts and into their tummies. So they're very efficient at eating a variety of things. Now, the only other thing that's real noticeable in this internal anatomy and is important to us, of course, would be what you see at the base of each of these little legs. And I'm trying to find my little crab that shows it the best. We can turn this little guy around. And at the base of each of the legs, you see this kind of fleshy material. That, of course, is muscle tissue. But it's important to us because that's what we'd like to eat. And economically, our blue crabs, Kalanectes sapidus, are extremely important contributors to our economy because we all like that crab meat. Any questions?